This is a response video to Johnny Lee, his video, Non-Existence is Better Than Life or Death. Now, I would like to start doing these response videos instead of making comments in the comment sections um, to videos where I'd like to uh, respond to. Um, because I think I'd have a better chance of getting um, a, a response from the original uh, video creator. Um, so, all right, I'm I'm just gonna get right into it um, with the idea that non-existence can be better. Uh, than anything, life or death. Um, so, let's start with this, uh, a thought experiment that I have. First, let's imagine that the universe is completely devoid of all life. Everything, there, there's just no life whatsoever, and so therefore there's no consciousness anywhere. There can be stars and planets and whatever, but there's just no life, and so there's no consciousness whatsoever. But then, out of, uh, we'll just say you, you pop into existence. For the sake of this thought experiment, you just pop into existence. Um, I know people don't pop into existence uh, like that, but thought experiments, you can basically uh, em employ anything you need to in order to get the point across. So, you pop into existence, and now there is consciousness. There is conscious experience. And so, now, imagine you die. And immediately after you die, some other uh, organism, sentient organism, pops into existence. Now, there's consciousness once again. You, when you died, you didn't go into a black void or anything, and, and into some state that could be called non-existence, that is somehow... Um, keeping you safe from the conscious experience that is now being done by this other brain. Uh, you don't e exist anymore, but yet there, there did come along conscious experience after you died. It was just being done by a different brain, some other brain, the one that now does exist. So there was conscious experience, and then it ended, but then there's conscious experience again. Now, it's not a continuation of you. So let, let's take a look at what you are. What you are is just a, a body, that, a life. A, objectively speaking, you have to see yourself as just basically a doer of consciousness. Almost like a film projector that is projecting a, a, the image onto a screen, um, you know, it doesn't really matter which projector is doing it as long as the, there's an image being projected. One projector can break, but then we just bring in another projector and it's projecting an image. So either way, we have an image. So... Again, what are you? You're, you are um, a, a body that is uh, just a collection of uh, cells and stuff. You're, you're the, this organism that has this capability of generating consciousness. And so, and, and you didn't exist, so let's say that there was non-existence, but... So what was it that ended that non-existence? Well, it was the birth of a body uh, that started doing consciousness is what ended that non-existence. 
So that non-existence was ended due to a brain doing consciousness. Just a brain doing consciousness. It doesn't matter that that brain is you or not. It just matters that a brain is what's responsible for um, ending that non-existence. A brain just starts doing consciousness and then there's no more non-existence. And so whether or not it was the brain that's listening to this video right now or if it was if it was some other brain that is the one that uh, ended that non-existence it, it doesn't matter as far as that non-existence ending and there being consciousness as opposed to uh, what some call non-existent or uh, nothingness or peaceful oblivion and all that um, there, there is no, there, there's not going to be any perpetual, um, uh, peaceful obliv oblivion after death, and there wasn't, uh, peace before you existed. Um, so, again, if, <clears throat> back to the thought experiment with the empty universe, if you weren't born if you never came to exist, but then this other brain came to exist and started doing consciousness, well, then there's consciousness either way. There's still consciousness. And that's all that really matters is that, like, let's say there was, in this thought experiment, the empty universe thought experiment, let's say there was nothingness. And so all of a sudden, there's consciousness. And then we say, well, what's responsible for this consciousness? Oh, look, it's a brain that's doing consciousness. Uh, that's what's responsible for what antinatalists refer to as the imposition of life. So that brain could have been the brain that's listening to this video right now, or it could have been some other brain. It doesn't matter. Either way, uh, the nothingness was ended due to uh, the existence of consciousness. Now, I'm not saying consciousness exists as a substance or anything like that. I'm just saying that uh, there is consciousness occurring as opposed to uh, a, a lack of experience or anything. If you don't exist, you don't get to be safeguarded from that consciousness that does exist um so so this this idea that not being born would be better it it uh, the only way that could really matter is if your life is really bad uh your specific life is really bad um because if it were not this life, it would have been one of the lives that does exist right now, as opposed to nothingness or non-existence or whatever you want to call it, nothingness or peaceful oblivion or blankness. Um, but in David Benatar's view, all life is just like he kind of looks at it monolithically where all life is uh bad and no matter how uh good or bad it is to that person it's just all all no life is worth living every for every single person he says it would have been better if they were not born but what i'm saying is if i wasn't born Let's say I'm an antinatalist, and so if I wasn't born, but then, because what I've said earlier, if I wasn't born, then it would be some other life. But then, let's say that person is also an antinatalist, and so that person will say, well, I wish I wasn't born, but then if they weren't born, then it would have been some other life. And then, let's say that person is also an antinatalist. And so it's just like, it becomes like a, a hall of mirrors where it's just everywhere you turn, you see yourself. You see, everywhere you turn, there's just another life. 
you know, it's, and I've spoken to many antinatalists on it, on, on this, um, and I ask, if you weren't born you, would you, is there any other life you would have rather been born as? And they all say, no, no life. I, I want no life at all. I want, and some of them immediately say, I, I want nothingness. I want uh, complete nothingness forever, you know. And what I'm pointing out is that that is not an option. That just doesn't exist. The only way that that could be an option is if there really was some kind of black peaceful void that we go to after death and that we came from. But no such void exists. That's uh, supernatural, that idea. This is due to the naturalistic uh, view that brains are what's responsible for consciousness. Uh, it's, it's like, it doesn't matter which brain is doing it, but if there is a brain doing consciousness, then there is consciousness as opposed to nothingness. But even if there were no brains whatsoever in the universe ever again, there would still be no nothingness. There, would, it, there wouldn't be a, a, a sigh of relief uh, or some kind of, um, uh, you know, something that we could... Uh, look forward to. Um, but I, I already touched on all that in another video, so my last two videos, I believe, in many of my other ones, uh, about the heat death of the universe and all of that, not being anything that would um, console antinatalists. Uh, so I believe that's and, and I'm not saying that we should have kids, except for, I did touch on that in two videos where there actually is uh, one scenario where I can think of that it would be ethical to have kids. But you can, uh, that's a video response to amendum or amend, amendum, however you say it. And I'm not an antinatalist, I'm just... Uh, I just see this major flaw in the uh, asymmetry argument, and my goal is to bring this to people's attention because I see people promoting the idea that they should shame their parents. Antinatalists should be angry at their parents, or they should confront their parents and uh, shame them for bringing them to existence. But I'm pointing out that if it were not this life, then it would have been some other life. If it, it, if it isn't one life, it's another. So you can't really shame your parents because the, it wouldn't matter if you weren't born. There would, it would have just been some other life. So it, it's illogical to shame your parents. Now we have people talking about suing their parents as well. But anyways, this video is getting much longer than I expected. But thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Hopefully you'll respond. Thanks. Bye.